security, a security post in Abba, killing five soldiers and six civilians during a shootout. Your thoughts? I think it was, it, was, it was one of the most cowardly acts that has been carried out recently. It's quite sad because it's like a, uh, one year down the line, we still have the security challenges. But what bothers me here is that they came with three tinted SUVs, Prado. Everybody knows how much a Prado cost. They actually tell you how much these people are, how they're being funded. Uh, while the three SUVs were approaching, they, had, they also had ground support. So there was failure of intelligence because I, that would be a Kabaz junction, you know, Bingwa, local government area where this attack took place. I heard the junction is, is a wide junction that they could have been able to tell. And when you see three SUVs coming at the time when you have talked about seats at home, I thought there should have been more of intelligence. I said as it is, but it was a surprise attack. And at this point in time, the National Intelligence Agency have to sit up because Simon Ekpa is becoming more of a, a cog in the wheel of progress for the five southeastern states. Mm. We have, some of us have said that uh, holding down the Mazinam the Kanu uh, has been uh, negative because it has given cause to raise a Simon Ekpa, who, who is not preaching the same sermon as Nnamdi Dekanu was preaching, who is preaching violence. He's in Finland. I wonder what, they are, what the Nigerian embassy in Finland is doing, and the Nigerian foreign minister is doing at this uh, material point in time. He goes on Twitter. He, 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 he calls out this uh, violent act. He goes on propaganda. He says he's carrying out referendum, and they have been 30 million votes. Apparently, this, is, this attack was not done by IPOP. This was done by Simon Epper's boys. And he, he posted it, probably posted it on Twitter. If you notice, he has been, he has been, uh, he has been number one on, the tweet, on, on, on trends for, for some time now on Twitter. And he's enjoying all the, all the media attention. And, and, you know, that gathers him more support, gathers him more finances. And these are the finances that he's using. You know, he actually does empowerment programs. Mm. Simon Epper, he sends funds to these uh, people who actually also see him in the quest of, uh, of being a benefactor. So the, the government has to do something about it. Yes, if not, the South East is going to continue to be a, a right. world theater. And one thing I must also point yeah, out, briefly. the military says they're going to go after them, but this is a guerrilla warfare. It's quite difficult to get people in a guerrilla warfare. Yeah, that's why we're warning that it has to be done within the ambit of the law. Um, but, I mean, you, you, you make a, some very good points there. And, and of course, the, the Nigerian government can't go to Finland and, and um, sort of try and... Um, extract Simon Etna from there, but all they can do is, is try and get the cooperation of the Finnish government. And the Finns have said that they've, I mean, they've tried at one point to pick him up. They said that um, there just didn't seem to be any evidence directly linking him to what was going on here. Well, let me come to you, uh, Abba Kaka, and I apologize, I was calling you Abba Kaba, uh, but somebody had, had, had written your name that way um, and forwarded it to me, so I do apologize. But I mean, Kenny Okolobo was, was talking about this and the linkage to Namdi Kanu. Does all this make it less likely, because the name IPOB is associated with this, that Namdi Kanu will be released anytime soon? Or does it strengthen the argument which he himself makes that in his absence, the group is running amok, but if he was freed, the reason for their violent protest